Broadcast permission for the following program is made possible by the Columbia Broadcasting System. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. The poets claim it's love that makes the world go round. That's a beautiful conceit, and we should let them enjoy it. However, practical people know better. Sensible people know what really makes the world go round, and that's money. Yes, money. With money, you not only make the world go round, but you can make it go fast or slow or even bring it to a full, complete, and shuddering stop. Oliver, Oliver, darling. Good morning, Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson? Is something wrong, Colonel Colfax? You have a certain look on your face. Have I? What kind of look? Oh, the look of a man who's about to announce he wants to break his engagement. Is that why you're here? No, that is not why. I have come to... Yes, I have come to place you under arrest. Arrest? Miss Mariah Wilson, you are charged with spying against the government of the Confederate States of America. And it is my duty to conduct you to a place of court martial. Our mystery drama, Solid Gold Soldiers was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Wager and E.V. Jester. I'll be back shortly with Act One. No war in our history has the power to fire the imagination as does the Civil War. Or, if you will... The war between the states. Obviously, that's because it was our very own war. It belonged to us and to nobody else. Professional and amateur historians keep fighting and refighting it constantly. If Grant had done this, or if Lee had done that, or if Longstreet or Jackson or Hood had only done something else, we're obsessed with the battles, the great bloody battles, Donelson, Vicksburg, Gettysburg, the wilderness... But there were greater, more important, more decisive battles than these. Battles in which not one drop of blood was shed. Battles which did not occur on the open field. We're in Charleston, South Carolina. It is the beginning of the year 1863. Ah, Mr. Burton, please be seated. Ah, oh, thank you. Devilish weather out there, Colonel Colfax. In here, too. I admit, sir, it is a bit warm. Warm? Warm, you say? I have no fear of the fires of Hades after sampling the heat of your fair city, sir. It does take getting used to. Uh... Sir, have you examined the list? Yes, indeed. Each and every item. You must admit it would be quite a windfall for the merchants and manufacturers you represent in Great Britain. Windfall? Bless my soul, sir. How can you call it a windfall? <laughs> Look at the prices we offer you for the necessities of life and the sinews of war. Which uh, brings us to the matter of payment. I thought we had agreed we are pledging our cotton Cotton, cotton. yes, the most precious and uh, valuable commodity. Several million bales of cotton would be a godsend to the mills of England. There is, however, one small difficulty. Difficulty? Oh, come, Colonel Colfax. You know as well as I do the nature of the difficulty... You also pledged us last year's cotton. And it's yours. It belongs to you. Not while it sits and rots on the docks of Charleston. We are planning a fleet of blockade destroyers. The truth is that the Federals control the seas. Now, I have been instructed by my principals to insist on direct payment. Very well. We shall pay you in cash. Well, I hope you understand, Colonel, by cash we do not mean paper. Sir... Do you impugn the honor of the Confederate States of America? Well, I'm only saying, Colonel, with no offense, that anyone can set up a press and print money. I consider that an insult. Spare me your melodrama. We cannot accept your paper money. 
Which is another way of saying you have no faith in our government. Faith is too fragile to stand alone. It usually requires a pedestal. And uh, one made of gold is always best. But we are winning. We won the battles at Bull Run, Chancellorville, Fredericksburg. Unfortunately, you have not won any lately. Well, it's no secret that Lee is planning an offensive into the north, into Pennsylvania. We do not consider that a wise maneuver. It is not for foreigners to determine the tactics and strategy of our war. Ah, but you see, Colonel, it is our war also. We already are heavily invested, and you are asking us to support you further. We are willing to pay for all materials. And we must insist on payment in gold. Gold? As a down payment, as a token of good faith. One million dollars in gold. But those, sir, are our terms. I am not empowered to approve of payment in gold. Well, I understand. I... I will have to take up the matter with the president himself. Well, naturally. I, uh... I have at my disposal a steam-powered blockade runner, easily the fastest ship afloat. We can load her with the gold at night, steal out of the harbor, and be in London 12 days from now. Your merchandise can be delivered here some 20 days later. In one month, sir, you will have arms, ammunition, equipment, and supplies for an entire army corps. I see. Very well, Mr. Burton. I shall convey these rather harsh conditions to the president. Harsh conditions. Well, son, business is business. Not among gentlemen. Colonel, war just is not... A gentleman's business. Those are the terms, Mr. President. Hmm. In return for the gold, we are to receive all the items on the list. Yes, sir. We give Mr. Burton the money. He delivers it to England on his blockade runner. And then he has other blockade runners to bring us the equipment. Yes, sir. That's how we've been dealing with the British since the war began. The risks, Colonel... A ship carrying the gold can be intercepted or sunk by a federal man of war. Yes. And even if the gold is delivered to England, the ships carrying the cargo to us may be unable to run the blockade. In other words, the ordinary risks, Colonel. Yes, Mr. President. And what is your feeling in this matter? If we have the gold, I say let's do it. Why? Do we have a choice? The federals have ten factories to our one. Sooner or later, we must be overwhelmed by their superior equipment. We must win the war now or lose it forever. But we are winning, aren't we, Colonel? No, sir. We maul the Federals here in the East, but they have already driven us from the West. Is that how you see it? Our only hope is General Lee's planned invasion of Pennsylvania. As it stands now, it will fail. Why, Colonel? He hasn't enough men. But they are picked troops, the best soldiers in the world, experienced veterans. Their morale is splendid. Yes, they're straining at the leash and they'll make short work of the Yankees. I've heard all that kind of talk, sir. But Lee will have to suffer terrible casualties. We need another 20,000 men. Yes, you're right. Of course you're right, Colonel. At the crucial point, success will depend on a fresh, well-equipped reserve. Without it, Lee is lost. A million in gold can buy us that reserve army corps. They will turn the tide of the war. But do we have a million dollars in gold? We'll raise it. We'll raise it somehow. Tell Mr. Burton we agree to his terms. To die for one's country is to live forever. To fall in the fight is to stand with the brave. Bold sons of the South, we'll forget you never how holy the earth that will serve as your grave. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Your attention, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Miss Mariah Wilson, surely the foremost actress on the stage today. Thank you for your inspired recitation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending the Gold Ball this evening. These gala celebrations are being held all over the South to raise gold to buy the necessary supplies for our brave boys in the field. So give, give generously of your gold coins, your gold 
rings. In short, if it is gold, give it, give it. Thank you. Why, thank you. Miss Wilson, thank you so much for being with us this evening. Oh, my pleasure, Colonel. I've always gone to the theater to watch you, ma'am. I, I think you are a great artist. Thank you, Colonel. I understand you're a strong partisan of the Confederate cause. As an actress, I am partial to romance. And there simply is no romance in the North. It's so cold and so businesslike. Is it true what everyone says? That General Lee is actually going to invade the North? I shouldn't have asked that. I'm sure it's a military secret. Well, it's hardly a secret, Miss Wilson. Well, good evening, Colonel. Ah, Mr. Burton. A most successful affair, sir. Miss Wilson, may I present Mr. Alexander Burton? Ah, your servant, ma'am. How do you do? I have heard so much about you, Miss Wilson. In a very real sense, it might be said that this gale is being held for Mr. Burton. Indeed. Yes, Mr. Burton is the agent for the English Combine that will furnish us with the necessary supplies and equipment. Oh, well, then he deserves some very special treatment. It can be said that with Mr. Burton rests the fate of our country. Oh, now, sir, really. You mustn't make me all that important. Mr. Burton shall conduct the gold to England. May the heavens protect you and us. Mr. Burton. Thank you, ma'am. What a wonderful night this is. I have a feeling that victory is in the air. Victory and peace. Now I would like to drink to that. And I would like to dance to that. May I have the pleasure, Miss Wilson? <laughs> That's who's there. All right, I say, who's there? Well, if you're a bandit or a burglar, I warn you, I'm armed. Very well, let us find out. Good evening. What? Bless my soul, it's... It's Mariah Wilson. May I come in? Oh, to, to what do I owe this honor? May I ask you to put down the revolver? Firearms have always made me nervous. Yes, I confess they make me somewhat nervous as well. But once again, to what do I owe this honor? I came here because I am curious. Curious? Yes. I should like to know your name. Oh, but you know my name. Or perhaps you've forgotten. I'm Alexander Burton. No, sir. That's the discrepancy. You are not Alexander Burton, agent for the Great Britain Commercial and Manufacturing Group. Now, my dear young lady, how can you possibly say that? Well, I have two reasons. First, you're not an Englishman. Oh, your accent sounds authentic, but it's a stage accent and not the genuine article. Second, I know Alexander Burton. I met him when I played in London some years ago. Well, well, well. Yes, Mr. Burton. And, uh, what else do you have to say to me, Miss Wilson? I don't know what your endeavor is exactly, but I am announcing to you the fact that you now have a partner. A partner? Yes, a partner. A silent partner. A silent partner. And also a dead partner. You're a very rash young woman, Miss Wilson. And I'm afraid it must cost you your life. Well, who is Mr. Burton? Evidently, he is not as advertised. We know Mariah Wilson is a famous actress of the day, but obviously she's also a little more than that. Right now, she's looking into the muzzle of this gentleman's revolver. He may shoot her. He may not. Just what he does decide will be revealed in a few moments when I return with Act Two. In time of war, all other things being equal, a rich army will usually beat a poor army. An army travels on its stomach, which means it needs food. And it also travels on its feet, which means it needs shoes. And it needs a great many other things, too. And these are things only money can buy. 
the Confederate States is raising what was, for those days, a huge sum of gold. But where is it going? Now, Mr. Burton. You see, I still call you Mr. Burton. You know you can't kill me. Why not? Before I came here, I made my plans known to a friend. And if anything should occur, that friend will notify the proper authorities. <laughs> You're bluffing. Call it. Pull the trigger. Well. Well, bless us all, you are a spunky young woman. And now, Mr. Burton, how did you achieve your present position? Oh, that, well, it was a succession of events. I happened to be in Liverpool on business. What sort of business? Oh, whatever sort of business might come up. I see. And, uh, well, it was late at night and I was returning to my lodgings when I... I saw a well-dressed man walking up the street. Suddenly, two mean-looking fellows jumped on him and started to beat him. They were thieves, of course, who were after his money. Well, each to his own trade, I always say. I had no mind to interfere. But they happened to see me and became frightened, and they just ran away. Oh, oh. I'd steady, sir. Now, don't just lie oh. easy. Steady, oh. I'll call for help. And I'll get you... Oh, oh. My head, my head. Yes, they did strike you a nasty blow or two. I must, I must get back, back to the ship. No, 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 don't try to get up, sir. Worst thing for a blow on the old noggin. Ah, Just rest. The name, my name is Burton, Alexander Burton. Oh, yes, sir, I've heard of you. You're sailing for America, read all about you in the newspaper. I, oh, everything is, is spinning about, I... I'm dying, I'm dying. Now, sir, I, I live just a few doors up the street. You can uh, lie down and I can go for a doctor. No, no, get me, get me to the ship. It sails. Get me to... Well, he was in no condition to go anywhere. So I got him into my room somehow and stretched him out on the couch. I thought there'd be a gift in it for me, you know. But he wouldn't let me leave him. He clutched my hand and refused to let go. He just kept talking to me. He was delirious. I'm going there, representing my clients. I'll drive the biggest bargain in history. I'll make them pay. Pay in gold. None of their worthless paper. Gold. A million in gold. <coughs> gold. Now, take me to the ship. The ship is waiting to sail. The ship is waiting for me. For me. Take me to the ship. <coughs> And suddenly, he was dead. So, since he wouldn't need it any longer, I searched his pockets for money. And I looked at the sheaf of documents in his coat. And you decided to become Mr. Alexander Burton. Who is empowered to collect one million dollars in gold from the Confederate government. Hmm. What did you do with Mr. Burton's body? Oh, for a few shillings, you can always find some obliging gentleman. And the gold? I've discussed the matter with some of the crew who appeared sympathetic. The others will be convinced to join us, one way or another. And so the ship will take on the gold, but it will not sail to England. No, I'm afraid not. Well, now that I am your partner... Ah, yes, my new partner. My share should be 10%. That's quite a bit of money. Well, I could have asked for more, but I'm not greedy. And, uh... Just how do you expect to be paid? I expect you to deliver the money before the ship sails. Is it a bargain, partner? Yes, it's a bargain, partner. Miss Wilson, I haven't really had a chance to thank you for your efforts last night. <laughs> Oh, come now, Colonel. I did very little. That's not true. Your very presence cast a golden glow over the evening. Why, Colonel, how poetic. Do you actually write poetry? I believe every man speaks poetry when he's properly inspired, and I have found my inspiration. Really? Miss Wilson, may I call you Mariah? Please. Mariah, I have... Never been very good with words. Uh, well, I think you're doing very well. Thank you. Man, but action is more my style, and I... Well, Miss Wilson, uh, 
happen, Ryder. There is something I must tell you. For the first time in my life, I have met a woman to whom I would offer my heart and my hand. Colonel? I, I mean, you can't call a man Colonel after he says something like that. I don't even know your first name. <laughs> it's uh, Oliver. Oliver. Yes, I, I could give you my heart and my life. But here and now, they are not mine to offer. They belong to my country. I, I understand, Oliver. But may I hope, may I dare to hope that one day when this terrible war will be over... Yes, Colonel. Uh, Oliver, when this terrible war will finally be over. <laughs> Mr. Stryker, what news do you have for me? Well, all in all, the news is pretty good. Ah, what is it? Well, as you yourself should remember, you says to me, Stryker, I want you to watch that Miss Wilson woman night and day. Keep an eye on the house and follow wherever she goes. Remember? Yes, yes, I remember. Well, just this morning, she walks out of the house, strolls down the street, I follows her very cautious... And she turns down a deserted lane. And making sure she ain't observed, she quickly places her litter inside the trunk of an old oak tree. Aha, hello, what's this, I ask myself. And after she leaves, I just sticks me hand in, and here it is. I thank you, Mr. Stryker. Hey, what's it say? <laughs> you mean you weren't curious enough to read it? Uh, I'd need more than curiosity. I'd need to know how to read. Ah. <laughs> Beautiful handwriting this lady has. Alert, blockading squadron, runner, preparing to sail soon with gold shipment. Mm. Well, well, well. So think of what we have just learned about the fair Miss Moriah Wilson. Should we uh, get rid of Miss Wilson? I could do it with no trouble at all. No, 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 Stryker. There's always the correct way to do these things. Oh, Mr. Burton, I must apologize for one of our sudden southern storms. Yes, terrible weather, isn't it? But I am happy to report everything seems to be going smoothly. We should have all the gold and you can be ready to sail within the week. Oh, well, well, that is splendid. Uh, Colonel... Yes, sir. I'm... I'm not sure I know how to say this, but I... Uh, that, that, that was a splendid gallow you held the other evening. It was reputed to be the best in the whole South. Of course, we were graced by the presence of Miss Mariah Wilson. Ah, oh, yes, Miss Wilson. I'm afraid I should talk to you about Miss Wilson. <laughs> what is there to say about Miss Wilson? Well, I, I'm not sure. Perhaps I'm imagining things, but let me tell you at any rate. I, um... I had met Miss Wilson before we were introduced at the ball the other evening. Oh, Miss Wilson didn't seem to recall well, that. met is perhaps not quite the right word. Uh, Miss Wilson played the season of 1860 in London. As a matter of fact, I attended her last performance. I was very much impressed by the speech she made after the curtain fell. She said that she was returning home because war was certain. And, uh... She wanted to help her country. Oh, and she has, she has. She most certainly has helped. But her country is the North. Oh, Mr. Burton, I'm positive you're in error. Uh, if only I were. No, no, no. She had everyone in tears. She hailed Abram Lincoln as the savior of the United States. She said the South had been seized by the, 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 the powers of darkness. Mr. Burton, what you are telling me is absolutely incredible. Well, so what motive would I have for lying, for slandering the lady? I find what you are saying impossible to believe. As I know, sir. That's because you were in love with the lady. Sir. If you were not in love with the lady, would it be possible? Well, I feel that I know, Miss Wilson, that, that she cannot be what you say she is. Colonel, I know your feelings, but would you trust the fate of your country on them? So I... Colonel, certain I... things are difficult to... Uh, well, I felt it my duty to present you with 
a piece of information. The fact that she may have made such a speech on the eve of the war, that does not mean it expressed her true feelings. Oh, the speech sounded quite true to me. Those feelings may have changed when she came home and became convinced of the justice of the Southern cause. Would your feelings toward your country ever change, Colonel? Well, there's one way to find out. We will search her house. Just a moment. Oliver, what a wonderful surprise. Come in. I was hoping you'd come calling on me. Were you, Miss Wilson? Miss Wilson? Why, is something wrong, Colonel? Mariah. Confess. To what? Confess you're a Union spy. Who... Who accuses me? Does it matter? I have a right to know. Let me face my accuser. Mariah, if we love each other, there can be no falsehoods between us. Are you a spy? Who accuses me? I have received a report of a speech you made after your final performance in London in 1860. I wasn't in London in 1860. Unfortunately, Mr. Burton happened to see you express your Union sentiments quite... Strongly. I played the season of 1860 in Boston. Why, if you read the Boston newspapers, well, get old copies of the paper. Mr. Burton saw you and heard you. Mr. Burton. How do you know Mr. Burton is all that he claims to be? Miss Wilson, this is unworthy of you. Mr. Burton is an English gentleman. How do you know? <laughs> Mr. Burton carries all the proper documents. Can anyone here identify Mr. Burton? Well, can they? Do you intend to give a man whom nobody knows one million dollars in gold and let him sail away with it? Do you? Confess, Mariah, please. And I shall find a way to spare your life if I can. I'm... Well, please, Mariah, do not make it more difficult for me. Why do you insist I am a spy? This letter. It's in your handwritten script. Where? Where did you find that? We searched your house. Alert blockading squadron. Runner prepared to sail soon with gold shipment. I see. And you are a spy. It was the best way I could serve my country. I understand. And now? Now I am forced to place you under arrest. Well, may I ask a favor, Colonel? Of course. May I be permitted to change my costume for... The occasion. I should wear black. Oh. Very well, Miss Wilson. Thank you. I shall not keep you waiting. Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson. Gone. <laughs> Huck, who'd you let her get away, Lieutenant? But she didn't get away, Colonel. She is gone. Well, well, my man had all four sides of the house surrounded. All the windows were under observation, and the back door, she didn't come out of the house. Do you mean no one came out of that house? Well, that's right, sir, no one. No one at all? Well, no one except... Yes, who? An old slave woman. Oh, no one except an old slave woman. Where did she go? Where did she go? Sir? Yes, yes, where did she go? Quickly, where did I she go? I didn't notice, Colonel. Think! Well, I'll try, but... But who notices an old slave woman? <laughs> Of course, you and I know very well that the old slave lady is none other than Mariah Wilson. Well, she is now deep in the heart of the enemy country, and surely a hue and cry will be raised against her. However, she does have one thing in her favor. She's an actress. She can assume various roles. She has other parts to play when I return shortly with Act Three. In 1863, the American Civil War is reaching toward its crisis. The decisive battle will be fought at Gettysburg. As one famous Confederate general put it, battles are won by those who get thar fustest with the mostest. What the South must do is get the necessary tools of war from abroad. And this costs money. 
And money is scarce and precious. And this is what our story has been all about. Money. Which is what most stories are really all about. No? An old slave woman trudges wearily along a dusty country road in South Carolina. She stops near an old farmhouse. The farmer is in the front yard, about to saddle his horse. Yes, sir. What is it, Grandma? You hungry? Yes, sir. Powerful hungry. You ain't from around here. Don't tell me you running away at your age. Who you belong to? I can't remember, sir. Well, go around the back to the kitchen. Tell him I says to give you something to eat. I'd be powerful obliged to you, John Stevens. Good Lord. Come into the house quickly. We shall have to get rid of this Burton fellow. Why, John? Let him take the gold. We can have the blockade squadron capture him at sea. Look, he'll be flying a British flag, which means we can only board him inside the territorial limits. Suppose by some lucky chance he sneaks past the blockade. What if we're forced to capture him on the high seas? We have no right to board a British ship in international waters. Then we must force the rebels to use one of their own blockade runners. The problem remains how to get rid of this Burton or whatever his name is. I can do that. How? Well, just leave the details to me. I'm an actress. Oh, but that's only half the job. When they get rid of him and decide to use their own vessel, we need someone on board that ship. That will be truly impossible, Mariah. Every member of that crew will be a picked man. I could get on board that ship. You could... Oh, well, how could you possibly hope I to... I know Colonel Oliver Colfax. I know how he feels, how he thinks. I know a way to get on board. How? But they can always use a cabin boy. I'd need a little luck. But could you actually disguise yourself? I could try. They'll choose a dark night. That have a fast ship. They might be able to steal past the squadron, but if I can get on board with one of those new pistols that fire a bright light into the sky... I... Yes, a flare. A flare. Yes. It would be like a flash of daylight. The blockade squadron would see the ship immediately. They could blow it right out of the water. But, Mariah, you'll be on that ship. But, John... Somebody has to make sure the Navy catches sight of that blockade runner. Somebody has to make noise or fire a flare or do something. And if that somebody has to be me, well, I can only tell you the gold must never get to England. Well, Colonel, tonight is the great event, eh? Yes, and it looks like favorable time, too. They'll probably be a heavy mist, huh? judging from the weather now. Oh, yes, sir, I'm sure of the success of our enterprise. Shall you be my guest for luncheon, sir? I know of a splendid place to dine just down the street. Oh, my pleasure, Colonel. Shall we? You know, I'm quite impressed with your country, Colonel. We shall be a great nation one day. We may be poor in material things, but we are rich in spirit. Which is what really matters. Henry! <laughs> Henry, it's you! Henry Atkins! I beg your pardon. They I... said you go going America, and I'll come looking for you. Mom, I'm, I'm afraid you're quite mistaken. Mistaken? Wouldn't I know my own husband? Would I forget a dog like you? Oh, oh, no. Would I forget Say how you left me, the baby? Oh, well, Colonel, this is most awkward. I said I I'd totally travel the old wide world to track you down and demand justice for what you've done to me and my child. And your child? This is a mad it woman, Colonel. It is to I... call me mad. Listen, everybody, listen. This beast here, he leaves a woman and an infant child in London, England, to starve to death. Now, 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 calm yourself, madam. I'm Colonel Colfax. I promise you justice to you will be done. You say your name is Elizabeth Atkins, and you met Mr. Burton. He ain't Mr. Burton. He's Mr. Atkins. Henry Atkins. You're sure? I know me own husband, don't I? You have proof. What proof would I have? Except me own word. He met me and married me in the spring of 57. A year later, he says to me, Hey, the pickings must be good in America. And I give him my life savings and off he goes, promising to send for me. How did you get here? Well, after I seen that I, I'd been had, I left the baby with me mother and come here searching for him. How did you know to come to Charleston? Well, sir, I knows the sort of gentleman he'd associate with. 
Someone said they heard he was onto a good thing down here. I see. So I, I didn't mean to cause nobody no trouble. It's just that I need money for the baby. I want him to grow up with an education like I never had. Well, Mrs. Atkins, we shall look into this further and thank you very much. <laughs> I was just barely able to rescue him from the mob, Mr. President. And the woman? Well, I questioned her, and she was quite distressed. Do you believe her story? I don't know what to believe. Where is Mr. Burton now? Under guard. Hmm. It's an awkward situation, Colonel, but it can't be helped. May I suggest, sir, that someone who knows Burton, someone who has dealt with him before, should come to Charleston and settle the matter? Well, then you do suspect him, Colonel. Sir, I... I know this. The last reserves, the last resources of our country are being entrusted to a gentleman who may or may not be who he says he is. Well, his documents, his instructions all seem to be in perfect order. His documents may have been stolen from the real Mr. Burton. If so, the real Mr. Burton is probably dead. Ah, Breckenridge. Breckenridge has dealt with the real Mr. Burton in London. Oh, but, sir, Mr. Breckenridge is in Richmond. Well, I know. And we stand to lose valuable time. We must have the equipment within the month if it's to do General Lee any good. Mr. President, may I suggest that we ship the gold to England in one of our own vessels? We run the risk it could be captured on the high seas. Uh, we also take the risk that a British blockade runner could be boarded before it leaves the territorial waters. Yes, yes, but once in international waters, the British flag protects her. However, the crew of most of these vessels are basically privateers, which is a polite name for pirates. Oh, they'll know they have gold aboard. It could be too tempting. Then why entrust this valuable cargo to strangers in any event? We must use one of our own craft. Yes, come in. Well, my lad, what can I do for you? Sir? Oh. Sir? Speak up, son. Speak up and step inside. Well? Sir, I wish to sign on the Dixie as cabin boy. <laughs> cabin boy? Why, you're too young to... I'm almost 13. Ah, uh, what do you know about the Dixie? Well, everybody knows she's going to run the blockade tonight. What do you mean, everybody? <laughs> well, I suppose everybody does. I want to sign aboard. Oh, I'm sorry, son. You're too young. you got to take me with you. Please. i got to fight for my country. i got nowhere to go. Yeah, we'll find a place for you with some kind-hearted people here in the city. My place is fighting for my country. My place is on the Dixie. But the Dixie's a ship of war. I'm good at fetching, at carrying. I do as I'm told. I, oh, please. I'll be a good sailor. Move aboard quickly and quietly, men. We just have time to make the tide. This fog is a blessing, Colonel. Yes, Lieutenant. And now I feel certain we shall succeed. Colonel, I brought you a cup of coffee. Thank you, son. Better get on board quickly. Yes, sir. They won't expect us to put out and see in this mist. Or if they do, it won't matter. Once we're underway, I don't think they have anything that can catch us. Last man's reported aboard, Colonel. We're ready to make way. Very good, Lieutenant. Gather the crew up forward. I needn't tell you, men, this is the single most important mission of the war. This cargo must get to England so we can return with the equipment we need to win. The Federals are out to get us. They'll try their damnedest. We shall move out on the sail. No one is to speak above a whisper. No one is to smoke or show any light whatsoever. Cook, the fire must be out in the galley. No smoking. Sailing, master... Take over the ship. The fog is lifting, sir. That's all right. There's no moon. I feel better out on the open sea where there's more room to maneuver. Tell the sailing master to change over to steam power as soon as he thinks it's safe. We need the speed. Yes, sir. Good evening, Colonel. Well, son, what are you doing up here? Cook sent me upstairs to find out what you want for your dinner. My compliments to the cook. Word from the lookout up forward, sir. He thinks he sees a ship off in the distance. It could be a Union steam frigate. Oh, they could blow us out of the water. 
Pass the word. All about the ship. Quiet. Absolute quiet. No one is to move. No one is to breathe. Yes, sir. Quiet, man. You see that ship, son? The ship? The Union battleship. No. No, sir. There. There in the darkness. Dead ahead. I... I don't see... That big black shape, that... That's the Union ship. Well, she... She's moving away. Yeah, that's right. She... She don't see us. What luck. What enchanted luck. She just happens not to see us. She's moving off. And in a minute, we'll be lost to sight. How, how can she not see us? Not at sea. It's hard. Just one more minute. Give us one more minute, and we'll be lost in the darkness. One more minute. Oh, she... She's starting to disappear. Yeah, just a half a minute more. No! Here. What? Here. Here. What are you doing? The rebel boat is here! After that boy, after him! Don't let him fire that pistol! Don't! Where's that boy? Why, he jumped overboard, sir. The Yankee ship has seen us. He's fine. Let's make a run for it. Here. Yeah. Let me give your hand, sailor. Thank you. Kind sir. It's you. Yes. Me. Do you still want me to share your right, Colonel? I ought to. Yes. Oh, come on before you drown. Oh. Well, the ship is gone under. With the gold. I'm sorry for you. But for me, I'm glad. You were the old slave lady? Yes. And Mrs. Atkins? Yes. And the cabin boy? Yes. What am I going to do with you? Well, depends on who picks us up. One of my boats, and you're my prisoner. One of your boats, and I'm your prisoner. Miss Wilson? Mariah, I am afraid that whichever boat picks us, I am your prisoner anyway. Then I, I only want to say that I am your prisoner, too. They were picked up by a French merchant ship en route to India via the Cape. The captain was happy to marry them. And by the time they could return to America, the war was over. Would that the rest of the country could have learned from them and become reconciled as quickly. All you need do is reconcile yourself to a short wait, and then I shall return. It needs all kinds of soldiers to make an army. Infantry, artillery, armor, and air. But the soldiers who are needed to support them all are the soldiers who neither fight nor die. The soldiers who never grow old or tired, weary or hungry. And these are the soldiers of solid gold, who will serve any master or any cause... And in the end, these are the soldiers who win. Our cast included Michael Wager, E.V. Juster, Ian Martin, Court Benson, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I brought my weapon to bear. I was about to shoot. And then I seen his face. Or what I mean is... He, he, he had no face. No head. No head. No, General. He was dressed in the uniform of a Hessian mercenary soldier. A and it was all complete. See, he didn't have his head. Since he had disobeyed your order to halt, why didn't you fire? Well, sir, if any other officer asked me that, I'd I answer my flint was wet or, or the primer flashed in the pan or, or that I shot and missed. But you know what my answer is to you, General? You were scared out of your wits. Yes, sir. 
And I would have been scared, too. All right, Sergeant, that's all. General Washington, I did see him. The, the four men with me, they seen him, too. He was a headless Hessian. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System.